And welcome, everybody, to Ulysses World's News. Welcome, Tim. Hey, welcome, Robert. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So let's let's get into it. So we're going to save uh, the best for last. We've got some great news today. Uh, but are you for... suggesting neither of us are the best? <laughs> Is that... That, that's what I'm suggesting. The best, the best you'll see. You'll, you'll see the best uh, as, as we come on. Um, but we'll start off with uh, Torg Eternity. So uh, I haven't heard any new word from the warehouse, but that probably means that the packing of books, they're packing books as we speak. So you can expect those uh, in the coming months. Um, I've heard that the final Aurorsh PDFs, however, should go out next week. So if folks have been waiting for those, I know folks have been waiting for those. So those should be out soon. Um, now, we, we mentioned this before, but we wanted to make sure that you heard um, well-known Torg artist and contributor Talon Dunning has created an officially sanctioned Torg Eternity for Tabletop Simulator, uh, and that looks really fantastic. So definitely check that out. I want to throw that in the chat there. In addition, last time we talked about the Hostile Takeover adventure being released for free on Foundry, and it hadn't quite gotten there yet at the, at the time, but now it's up there. So this adventure is, uh, the blurb is, during a clash with the church police, a local resistance crew in a French city has accidentally unleashed a demon, which managed to evade capture during the chaos. Now it's up to the Storm Knights to track down and eliminate the demon before it causes further damage, both to the unsuspecting locals and the reputation of Delphi. Um, Hostile Takeover is an original one-shot adventure for three to six alpha-level characters written by Torg Eternity designer Daryl Hayhurst. This adventure was originally published in the 2018 book, Delphi Missions, Rising Storm, and has been fully adapted for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. And this is a free adventure. So if you have, uh, if you've got the Foundry, or sorry, if you've got the Torg Eternity uh, rule set, which is also free, you can play it. So there you go. Uh, G, he asks, any, any more novel update uh, for Torg, Tim? We have uh, we've been working on a, a publishing deal for all of our novels, and uh, the contract is just being uh, discussed right now for its final details. And then we will we'll be able to get some news out on Torg novels and all of our other novels as well. So that's coming right up, but we're this close <laughs> being able to tell you all about that. Nice. And um, the Horseman streams every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific at uh, on Twitch, followed up by upload on YouTube. And JM has continued to run that. Um, and this week, the Horseman repelled the Ghost Syndicate and Lee May. Now they are faced with the dilemma of chasing their rivals or uncovering what they were after. Awesome. Well, that concludes everything about Torg Eternity we have to talk about today. So I'll take us on to our other product lines, starting with the Dark Eye. We recently released the Aventurian Bestiary Module, and Aventurian Armory Module for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So if you've got the Dark Eye, you can go ahead and expand your collection. And we will set up the links to our F-Shop so you can get both of those. That's the Aventurian Bestiary and the Armory Modules. So you can check those out. In the Aventuria Adventure card game, now that the late pledge for Extraordinary Heroes and Epic Adventures is finished, we've started packing orders and shipping. That's very good news. Keeps the warehouse busy. <laughs> Some people have gotten uh, shipping tracking, so your products should be on their way very soon. Uh, aside from that, Mo at the Tabletop Bellhop channel continues to put out great videos about the Aventuria Adventure card game. Before, we watched a bit of Moe's unboxing of the Aventuria Wheel of Life, but now he's done a full review, and we're putting up a YouTube link to that. Is that right? That's right. Okay, so yeah, that's, check out that review from uh, Mo at Tabletop Bellhop as well. Look at that. That's another meeting I have to go to. <laughs> Sorry, things happen on my computer while I'm in the middle of this. <laughs> So, uh, moving on from Aventuria, the um, Myth game is well in progress, both in the uh, re-release of the game that we're calling Dawn of Heroes. That's uh, very much in, in final playtesting right now. I just got a ton of notes this morning on, on uh, several schemes for character advancement that we're still considering right now, but those are really just refinements. So much of the game is uh, finished right now and uh, ready with art and other things to, that, that we can so lay out and everything. And you'll be seeing all of that coming up very, very soon. At the same time, 
getting the final uh, questionnaires and uh, information out to journeyman backers is is well underway. You'll see that, and we'll get that stuff shipped out very, very soon as well. On the role-playing game side, we're calling that myth Tales of Legend. Ross is well into creating products even beyond what will be the first wave of products when we finally get those out. And uh, there's a lot of good progress in art that we, we're going to be able to show you very soon on that as well. Separate product line entirely, Space 1889, very close to my heart. Uh, Daryl Hayhurst is, is deep into development on that. A lot of great art and uh, layout um, sort of preliminary materials are being created right now because that's, that's, that releases a ways down the line. But I know that Daryl is uh, going to be at Gen Con in Indianapolis in September. And he is looking to do a casual Space 1889 meet and greet at Gen Con. And you can find out his plans on the Space 1889 channel or on our Discord. And we'll put up a link to that as well. And yours truly will be there as well, in case, in case that's of any interest to any of you fans. So we'll talk about all that Space 1889 stuff at Gen Con. Look forward to that. And that brings us around to the feature presentation of the day. Yeah, so welcome our guest, uh, longtime RPG industry professional, Bill Bridges. Welcome, Bill. Bill, Hi, welcome. How you doing? Hey, great. Good to see you. Glad to be here. Yeah, great to have you. So Bill is here because the first thing we want to announce is that the Fading Suns New Frontiers crowdfunding is live and fully funded on Gabon Tabletop. Um, yes. Yeah. So that is that is fantastic. I'll throw a link in there for anybody that might have missed it. Um, but we know so many people are here because of Bill, so I'm sure I'm sure they know about it already. <laughs> I would hope so, but for those who haven't, there it is. <laughs> Ledge. So before we get into the details of uh, New Frontiers, let's talk about some of the other Fading Suns goings on, and there is a lot today. So first thing is that the PDFs for the original Kickstarter are now available on DriveThruRPG. So if you missed any of those PDFs, uh, you, can, you can get them now. I'll throw a link in there. Um, in addition, the physical books um, and physical products are all available from our F-Shop. So you can get all of that stuff. So if you, you know... If you want to grab them real quick um, and then pledge, you can do that. Um, also, streams. We've got tons going on. Normally, Bill Bridges and Andrew Greenberg do their heretical musings on the first and third Thursdays of the month uh, at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. But today, in honor of the launch of the New Frontiers, we'll be doing a special edition of heretical musings. So check that out later today, again, at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, they'll be talking about more New Frontiers, um, what you can find in it, and... Um, and we'll share a few pieces of new art there as well. In addition, JM and the crew of the Oh Boy have been streaming every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, the crew of the Oh Boy, having recovered Falcosis, prepares to take the fight back to the Fal Count Orleton. As they gain their allies, one question remains. Where is Lucia? Find out tonight at uh, 5.30 Pacific. Um, in addition, as part of the New Frontiers crowdfunding, uh, WebDM is running WebDM Plays Fading Suns, a three-episode actual play premiering this Sunday and the following two Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. Here's a little uh, little image. Um, that's that's their little logo. They've done um, uh, they did a really great intro video, which I think we watched. Oh, we watched it on Heretical Musings last time. Mm. Um, but you can find that on uh, the WebDM Plays channels. Uh, there's a great little intro that they did. Um, all right. Well, now let's get on to Bill. Let's talk about New Frontiers. So, Bill, tell us, tell us what New Frontiers is. Well, New Frontiers takes us beyond the borders of the known worlds and all the rogue and fringe worlds uh, that are... Uh, run by the Voldrock Star Nations. They're kind of space Vikings. They basically spend a lot of time raiding into the known worlds and uh, in and out. And so uh, especially House Hawkwood has disliked them for years and years and years. But the Emperor kind of did an end run around not only his rivals in the known worlds, but the Voldrock by uh, choosing as his bride and the new Empress a Voldrock shield maiden on the world of Hargard, and as part of his dowry, he has claimed the world of Hargard. So we're moving into Baldrock space, 
And some of them are embracing their new role within the known world, especially those who have been awarded noble titles, but many are not. And so we're building up to a big you know, clash of cultures between the Vuldrock and the known worlds. And as part of the uh, New Frontiers, we find all about the Vuldrock, their worlds, their history, their culture, a lot of the strange threats, their weird magic, especially the rune casting, which uses glyphs found on ancient Anunnaki artifacts to warp reality. Very strange uh, and mysterious pagan stuff to the known worlders. And to get to there, of course, you need spacecraft. So we've got a whole big giant book of spacecraft also giving you uh, some rules for constructing spaceships, plus uh, stealth ships, and uh, lots and lots of deck plans for ships. All the ships give you the history of these ships, plus all sorts of different configurations people can change, swap out different stuff within them, so they're not necessarily all the same when you encounter them. And uh, we'll also have a big book of dramas set on the world of Hargard, which is you now this big conflict space between these two cultures. So the GM will have lots of resources there to take his players into those worlds. That includes also a look at uh, one little fan favorite for many years, the uh, strange and mysterious alien Nizdarim. They're basically sentient mollusks who mm -hmm. use technology. And there are strange colonies of them on Hargard. And we also get to look at the uh, brother battle through the new Imperial dossier. They're the uh, warrior monks who uh, protect the known world, especially in all the borders and the frontier wars. And, of course, that means moving into Voldrock space, too, to protect folks. And, of course, maybe even convert these strange savages. And uh, we also get the Charioteers Guild. They're the Star Pilots Guild. And they're also a bunch of merchants, too. So they're almost always the first in into new places to exploit new markets, but also to ferry other people in and out of these places. And there's all sorts of host of other stuff, too. Uh, we'll have yeah, some fold-out deck plans for the spacecraft also. Yes. We've got mm -hmm. uh, neat little stuff like a life wheel for uh, tracking your character's vitality and uh, ammo wheels for tracking their ammo. Yeah. And uh, all sorts of great stretch goals to be unlocked and announced as we move on through the pledges. Nice. Yeah, so currently we're at 173 backers and thirty two over $32,000 raised. So that's fantastic. We're over 200% funded. So let's keep that moving. We still have 20 days to go. So definitely check that out. Um, so you mentioned the, the mollusks. Are they like underwater creatures? Like how do they, yeah. how does that work? Yeah, they live underwater. A uh, lot of their technology. In fact, one of the things we include is a sample uh, one-person submarine that one of their merchants uses to interact and trade with the new world. They, uh, the colony here, they are apparently uh, refugees from some sort of uh, conflict with their race, but nobody knows where they come from. The world itself doesn't seem to be part of the new world or Voldrock space. So this is one of the mysteries players might be able to uh, try to work their way out. Uh, a long time ago, we do know that they apparently originated on the world, the known world of Madoc, um, and used to war with the amphibious Oroim race there. But all the legends apparently say that they were taken or removed from the world ages ago, perhaps by the Anunnaki. Maybe they moved themselves. So there aren't any left on Madoc, and... Uh, the Oroim sort of have ancient legends about fighting these guys, so they don't tend to like them. Hmm. And now that we've moved into Voldrock space, we've discovered a colony of them, and uh, we'll see what happens. They have a very strange and mysterious god called Nidorak from beyond the stars. Hmm. And, uh, of course, uh, humans don't look kindly to this strange pagan cult that they're <laughs> up to. And some humans have actually adopted this cult in strange ways that they don't necessarily understand what they're doing. And we get a good look at that in the Hard Times on Hard Guard book, too. Oh, wow. So if they, they kind of seem like they've, they're somewhat spacefaring, how do they, how do they do that? Do they, do they like just yeah, they had water spaceships, all the time? Like... But yeah, they're water-filled ships. Mm -hmm. We don't really get into much of their spacecraft because the ones on Hard Guard aren't really flying about. Mm -hmm. they, they're pretty much down there now. Okay. Oh, so okay. they arrived in spacecraft, but they don't, they're not continuing to do it. They might still have them. But they, since nobody has really seen them, then we don't know yet and such. So it's mainly the underwater ones that you're going to deal with. 
and they come up to trade every now and then. So uh, that's how humans can meet them. Uh, Andrew in the chat says, we all live in a slug infested submarine. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to sing that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> they, they live in their octopus's garden. And... <laughs> nice. Um, so you mentioned that they're sort of like an old fan favorite, you know, they're, they're mentioned from the old, uh, older versions of fading Suns. What are some other things that um, uh, some of the original fans might, might recognize? Well, I mean, obviously the Baldrock, of course, and uh, one of the pagan religions you find throughout the known worlds in different fringe places is an old one called Gyarti, and they uh, have a certain magic that sometimes they're, uh, instead of theurgy, some of them practice some magic, and the Baldrock have very similar religion and practices, and including some Gyarti worshippers out there, too, so we've taken all the Gyarti magic, uh, from earlier editions and giving you all the new rules for them in here too and applied them to a, a Voldrock religion called Erdgeist and giving you all sorts of details on some of their gods and uh, some of their uh, theurgic rites, although they call them magic, and it uses different characteristics than theurgy. So uh, if you're really good at theurgy, you're not going to be good at the, this stuff. You have to learn it as a separate track of sorts. Hmm. And... Uh, and then we also, as I mentioned before, have rune casting, which is a whole new different type of magic. And rune casters are a really odd lot because you have to warp your mind and body to learn the secrets of these glyphs. And that means sometimes sacrificing body parts okay. or sacrificing some of your mental health to gain <laughs> some of these uh, secrets and powers, much like uh, Odin when he hung from the tree of Yggdrasil and sacrificed his eye to gain the knowledge of the runes in Norse mythology. These guys have to sometimes lose a hand, sometimes a leg, sometimes some of their, you know, uh, mental stability. Very cool. Yes. Speaking of very cool, also, I don't know if you guys have seen yet, but the, uh, the video that we have on, um, on the New Frontiers crowdfunding is amazing. It's very cool. Definitely check that, that out. It really brings like a flavor uh, to to this um, this new area. Uh, speaking of which, so since uh, Hargard has been given to the Emperor um, as part of his dowry, uh, they love him there, right? Everything's peachy there? <laughs> <laughs> well, on one continent where uh, the uh, House Eldred, they're now a minor house within the known worlds, um, there was a warlord there who uh, is allied with Alexius and her daughter is now the Empress of the known worlds. Uh, so she has uh, converted to a whole house and all her nobles, her thanes and uh, uh, warriors and since now get noble titles. Uh, they're all loyal to Alexius and trying to uh, claim the rest of the world. But there's a whole other continent called Ostmark that's run by another warlord who wants nothing to do with this. And they're holding out. And one of the uh, things the Hargard book details is there's a whole area there, the Plateau of Nalda, where there's lots of strange adventures you can have there, and we detail that in some detail. Um, this is the area where, in the Game Master's book, you got a little glimpse of Hargard. There's an ancient Anunnaki uh, gargoyle of sorts there, a big strange statue that appears to be some sort of alien uh, uh, scorpion sort of form. And uh, there's a, a drama in there that takes you to all sorts of uh, adventures involving that because, you know, everybody wants to unlock its secrets and figure out what's going on. Like the Scravers Guild, for instance, is moving in there trying to make a deal with all the local thanes so they can, uh, you know, scrounge through all the ruins in this place before the rest of the known worlders get there and, you know, find this stuff instead of them. So uh, there's all sorts of intrigue you can have, too, with noble houses. Uh, you know, the priests, of course, are going to want to try to convert these people. But then there's other people who may not necessarily want them to. Uh, the guilds, for instance, like the Scravers, even the Charioteers, they may want to slow down the pace of, uh, you know, this sort of conversion and movement in so they can try to exploit and build up as much uh, contracts as they can with these people before the nobles get a hold of them and such. So, yeah, it's, it's a world where there's all sorts of possibilities and uh, a world, a lot of changes going on. And so that book, uh, Hard Times at Hargard, is it like one adventure, a bunch of adventures, a campaign? What? Uh, there's okay. three big fat adventures in there, plus the whole section on the Nolda Plateau and then the uh, Nizdarim, you know, sentient tentacled mollusks. <laughs> 
including some of their technology. Awesome. Let's see, just looking through here, um, you know, one of the really cool things that, um, that the original crowdfunding had are like the metal, um, metal firebirds and things like that. Um, what, um, what does this crowdfunding have? Well, there's going to be some stretch goals that we unlock. Uh, I'm not sure how much I can talk about them. Yeah, let's not talk about those, but let's talk about what's what's currently. But uh, like I mentioned, (laughs) there's the life wheel, um, which tracks vitality and ammo. There's a box that comes with a number of them, so your whole troop can have some. Uh, uh, They're pretty cool to the uh, production side. uh, We've got uh, Saint Almathea, the saint of healing, as part of your vitality uh, wheel there, her stained glass image, whereas your ammo has the emblem of the Weaponsmith Guild on it. So they're kind of fun to look at. Uh, And there's going to be some cards, too. We'll find out more as we go along. All right, let's see. Currently we're at, what did I say we're at? We're at 32,000. So we have unlocked, um, for the stretch goals, um, Toward New Frontiers, you've made it possible thanks to you. Oh, that's our funding one. Uh, the Lion Roars at 17500 So we uh, all backers will receive a, or at least backers at, at that appropriate level, receive a House Hawkwood-styled character sheet as a PDF, um, 10 gear cards as a PDF that will help you on your exploration of New Frontiers, a welcome mat at 22000 which was the uh, House Hawkwood-styled play mat as a PDF, at 25,000, we unlocked the Reeves Guild style character sheet as a PDF. Um, at 27,500, uh, the House Hawkwood style playmat as a print version for uh, people of a certain level. Um, Great. And then at 30,000, the uh, Reeves Guild playmat as a PDF. And then the next one uh, at 32,500 is the uh, Law of Heaven um, Earth Orthodox style PDF. A character sheet, and then right after that at 35,000 would be the um, Reeves Guild style playmat. So we're almost there to the Orthodox PDF and Reeves Guild style playmat. So, yeah, yeah lots of other cool stuff coming. So, uh, you know, keep the, getting that pledge up there, spread the word, so <laughs> you get more cool stretch goals. Definitely. If, and if you missed the first one, you can do an add on of the core books. Um, so check that right. out, check that out. So. Uh, let me add on it too that the uh, the Imperial dossiers, uh, beyond just telling you about those factions, the charioteers, for instance, uh, the whole middle section on what space travel is like. If you're somebody who's bought your mm-hmm. passenger on a ship, what you can expect from launch to landing. Uh, there's all sorts of new callings for charioteers, but there's also lists of uh, if you were a charioteer and you got your starship, what your costs are going to be to have the provisions to. Uh, have it a birth, what you can charge your passengers, all that kind of stuff. So it helps players run their own sort of space businesses. It's more likely that your troop will have to co-own a ship because these things are expensive. Right. So you're going to have to share with your fellow players. But there you go. And the uh, Brother Battle Book, besides giving you all sorts of new uh, callings and perks, tells you all about the uh, threat assessments going on in the new worlds right now, basically along the borders. It's not just the Voldrock. There's still the Symbiot front. There's still the Kurgan Caliphate front with the Hazat. Then the Mysterious Bow. Nobody knows what they're up to. Nice. So lots of lots of great stuff going on there. Um we are really close to opening up the Company of the Phoenix, which is the uh, Fading Suns um, community content program over at Drive Through right. RPG. Um, things are, you know, we're just waiting on a couple of uh, final details. And so, if you've got, you know, if you've been running Fading Suns and you've been creating content for that, you know, we're going to put out a kind of layout and art pack so that you can use to make your uh, your products look like the official ones and um, get them out there. So. Uh, we'll put links to that. Uh, you know, as soon as all that stuff is live and ready, we will an- announce that and put them up. We were yeah, this we, close yeah. for that being ready this morning. Yes, yeah, so close, Quite so close, that close. <laughs> Let's see. Andrew asked, "How do you add the add-on? How do you add the add-on?" I'm not sure. Uh, there should be, you know, should give you an option at some point. Uh, uh, he says that we, we get to add the option with with any pledge. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, can you add it after you have submitted your pledge? That I'm not sure. I'm not sure about. I, I think you should be able to go back and edit. I, would I think. think there's a way. Yeah, we yeah. think you can. If there's not, we should invent one. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so let's uh, let's get into some some teasers and sneak peeks. So we we've given some sneak peeks, uh, some previews over the past weeks at the website. So you can go check that out. Um, we previewed some um, some layout, some pages laid out, and some given some uh, NPCs and some ships and some some of the callings and things like that. And there will be more that will be um, put up as updates um, on the crowdfunding. So watch out for that. But let's look at some art we've got here. Um, cool. What do we got? So this is the auxiliary. So we've uh, we cool. shared the the calling of the auxiliary um, on the website, but we have not seen the the image this close. Uh, I really love the uh, the artist that's done most of the, uh, These are the individual images, uh, individual people. I just love that style. It's got a very like you know uh, medieval style, um, and yet there's futuristic stuff. Oh yeah, as well for sure. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, the brother battle auxiliary. Those are the ones who, whether well, not the elite brother battle monks, they're the ones who support them in all their uh, war activities. Oh, look, still f- Tim and Bill right there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Are we, we're together yeah, we're squeezy in there yeah yeah there you go now we got both all right there. cool all right i feel very close to you now. <laughs> yeah. very close all right let's see um and then we've got some the covers of the books so you can check them out um that w- what is that right there it looks like a giant uh that is uh as you'll discover in the adventure when i mentioned the big giant anunnaki uh mm. scorpion statue mm. as you discover in the adventure there's more than one they're smaller though but uh that's one of the hunts is to find these other statues cool. nice looks right. great and then we've got saint paulus's uh field guide to spacecraft Mm-hmm. This is where you get to see all sorts of different spacecraft. I believe the one you can see over that guy's shoulder on the right side of the book is an Urobun spacecraft. Oh, this is where I know. It's got this sort of uh, uh, sail that sort of comes out and uh, catches uh, light and such. It's Let's rather interesting. Get a little so it's an alien that. spacecraft. There you go. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. So, yeah, that'll give you all sorts of ships, including some Bulldrock ships. And like I said, there's a little short slip construction rules, rules for stealth ships. Oh, very cool. That's fun stuff. Nice. All right, and then here is the uh, the Bulldrock space book. This gives you all the information on the star nations, histories, cultures, worlds, creatures, magic, rune casting. Oh, uh, also for those in the first core book who missed these, who've been asking, all the rules for bows and arrows and crossbows <laughs> are here too, because the Voldrock tend to use those more often than the okay. worlders. Nice, yeah, yeah, that looks fantastic. I really love the the whole purple, you know, oh, yeah. theme of these books. It makes it yeah. really stand out. Nice stuff. Yeah. Right. Anything else you want to add about uh, Fading Suns or New Frontiers, Bill? Oh, gee, I can't think. I think we've gone through the whole thing. I'd love to talk about the stretch goals. We can't. Those are going to be secret as you pledge. Keep watching. Oh, See what's unlocked. It's <laughs> fun. But, yeah, um, hope everybody loves this one. We put a lot of work, and a lot of the authors did such a great bang-up job on this stuff. I can't take credit for it all. <laughs> I have to share it, darn it. You can't? No, sadly enough, I have to credit the authors, too, and the artists. Oh, my God, they're doing a great job. And our art director, Mike Schmidt, all sorts of good stuff all around, everybody. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, So, yeah, definitely dig into this stuff. Pledge uh, helps Fading Suns to keep going, and we can keep unlocking more secrets to the universe as we go. Yeah, and I really want to uh, encourage people to, like, if you played back in the day and you're backing this, make sure you share it with all your gamer friends that used to play Fading Suns with so we can get, let all the Fading Suns fans know about this and, and, and so they can pick right. up the new, the new edition. Mm-hmm. All right, Definitely. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to sign out here pretty quickly, but, I, you know, this is a sad day for us as well. Sorry, everybody, that... Um, it turns out that Robert, my co-host, is actually leaving Ulysses, and this is the last show he's going to be doing with us. So uh, it's a shame to lose him. He's been doing great work for us, and 
always been a pleasure. We've been friends for many years, but other opportunities await. So uh, farewell to Robert, everybody. You know, wish him wish him well, and uh, uh, we'll we'll catch him at conventions and whatnot. But his time at Ulysses has now come to an end. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. I really appreciate it. You know, um, I I um, I give you credit or blame. I'm not sure which uh, for me really uh, joining the uh, the industry a long time ago <laughs> when you were doing your Dragon Kings crowdfunding. Uh, before right. that, we started talking and and uh, I was giving you suggestions on, um, on on things to tweet. And you're like, you just want to do this for me? And I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and that pretty much got me in there. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I, you know, it's been fun. Um, it's been great learning, um, fading suns, uh, Torg eternity, the dark eye. Uh, it's, you know, it's been great. It's been great working with, with all of you. And, uh, I will definitely, um, definitely miss all of you, miss all our, all of our interactions and, and everybody out here, uh, you know, and in Twitch land and YouTube, um, everybody that's been following you, the Spiels, the community has been fantastic. Um, G he asked, "Will we still have Ulysses World in two weeks?" So we um, we're kind of fi trying to figure that out, trying to see where that goes, and I'm sure they will be announcing that. Um, for now, the uh, you know the German marketing team will be kind of taking over the social media and stuff after today. So, um, uh, but I'm sure I'll still be I'll still be a fan and I'll still be around probably in the Discord here and there. So, um, so thank you, I appreciate it. Um, Definitely. Thanks a lot for everything you've done. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Bill. It's been great, really great working with you. You know, <laughs> same thing I said with Andrew, like going back and looking at the things that, that you guys put out originally that I used to play a long time. Like I didn't, you know, in high school, I really didn't follow, you know, follow designers and stuff. So I didn't really know uh, who wrote the books. But then as I go back, I'm like, oh my gosh, Bill wrote this and Andrew wrote this. And obviously <laughs> all the stuff Tim had written by that point, but it was. It's really great to work with uh, with uh, you know some industry luminaries as you uh, as all of you are. Well, thanks. We'll get someone in here eventually to fill your enormous shoes. But good luck to you and all the things you're going to do. And, and we'll stay in touch on the uh, all the different things that uh, that are just pure gaming and we enjoy. So good luck to you. Thanks. Um, so thanks for watching Ulysses World Show. Uh, if you'd like to chat more with Ulysses folks or other fans, please check out our Discord community. Um, and if you like the show, please follow and subscribe to our channels on Twitch and YouTube and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on anything. So for Ulysses Spiel, I'm Robert Aducci, and this is Tim Brown and Bill Bridges. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Bye. everybody.